guys you're welcome back to my channel my name is Stella now I had previously um, showed us how to draft the sleeve so in this video we're going to learn how to um, draft the pattern for this blouse so I also want to specially thank everyone that is already a member of this family I mean we just hit 10,000 and it's a huge milestone so I want to appreciate everyone that is already a member of this family and if you're just seeing my video for the first time kindly subscribe to the channel and turn on your notification bell so you get notified each time I upload a new video now let's jump right into the video so we're going to be altering this basic bodies block full scale to the desired style so I already altered the front bodies to I'm whole princess that and the back is just um, having the waist that for now we'll still do the alteration later now I made use of the standard neck width of 3 inches and neck depth of 3 inches then I marked half of her shoulder now to get the chest line I simply divided her bust round by 6 and I added 1.5 inches so let's be labeling as I take us through what I have done so far now this is the chest line and here is the bust point line now here is the under bust line and this is the front length or you can also call it the waist line and this is the blouse length now the same thing applies to the back this is the chest line for the back and the back length or the waist length and the blouse length now the bust that is two inches so automatically the back length is shorter by two inches so this is what i have done so far now let's proceed with the alterations so to begin the very first thing we're going to do is to tighten the neckline and to do that i'll draw a straight line that will run from the bust point line to the neckline depth so i come in with my ruler and i'm going to connect a straight line from the bust point to the three inches neck depth so i'll go ahead and draw the straight line and this is it so i will go away from this line by 0.5 inch and i'll connect it back to the bust point so i know the question that will be going on in your mind will it affect the neckline or the blouse it won't so instead it's going to eliminate any form of gaping around the neckline so here we have it i have connected the 0.5 inch i went away with back to the bust point now i will be closing this line so we'll be closing it up before we make further alteration and to do that I will go ahead and raise the line so i'm going to raise one of the legs up this way it's still the same method of closing our boss that and every other type of that that you know of so i'll go ahead and raise the pattern paper along um the line this way so um bear in mind that this is paper so you need to be a bit careful so that it doesn't tear so i have raised it up now i'm going to rest it on the second leg so this is it i have completely closed um the dart that we just created now i'll come here with my paper tape and i'm going to tape this down permanently yeah and here we have it so i have tightened the neckline now like i mentioned earlier this is not going to affect anything it's simply going to make your outfit to sit perfectly to give you a perfect fit um neckline now moving on we need to mark the over bust line and to do that i'll go ahead and measure from the bust point line to the under bust and what i have there is four inches now i'll transfer these measurements upwards but most of the time i like to subtract half inch from it so instead of marking four inches i'll mark 3.5 inches pay attention that i have my tape placed on the bust point line upwards so I'll go ahead and connect this using a broken line because um, we're not actually going to make use of this line. It's simply a guide. Now, this will help you to know how, um, how much your cleavage is being exposed. So that's the essence of the overboss line. So I'll simply label it as my CL, which is the cleavage line. Now let's move to the shoulder. So I want the width of the shoulder to be 3.5 inches. So from the shoulder tip, I'll come inwards and I'll measure 3.5 inches. Now I have a dot there. So from that 3.5 inches on the shoulder slope, I will come down by 4.5 inches and I'll make a mark there. So at this 4.5 inches, I want the width at that point to be 3 inches. So this is it. So I will come in with my ruler and we're going to use a slight curve 
to connect this. Remember on the shoulder slope, um, we made the shoulder width to be 3.5. Then I came down by 4.5 and the width at that point is three inches. So this is it. Yeah. Now um, I'll come in with my French curve and I'll go ahead and connect to our cleave line. Remember your cleave line is simply the extent of your neckline depth. Okay. And I took us through how I got mine. So I'll go ahead and connect it using my curve. And this is it for the neckline. But we're not going to leave it this way also. So on the shoulder slope also, we're going to come down by half inch to tighten the neckline. Now for this particular style, you need to do all your tightenings and contourings at this point. If you don't and transfer this to the fabric, you will not have any other opportunity to tighten it again. Also, this further tightening on the shoulder will ensure that the shoulder does not drop when you wear um, the blouse. So this is it for the blouse. We're going to be cutting this um, part that I just shaded off. Now, um, we're done with the alteration for the neckline area. Now let's move over to the lower part. And on the lower part, the first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and extend our dart legs to touch the hemline. So I simply come in with my ruler and I'll go ahead and just extend all the dart legs to touch the hemline. Yeah. And here we have it. So I simply extended the dart legs to touch the hemline of the blouse. Now remember that we're here to close the bust dart. So the next thing um, I'll go ahead and do is to shape the hemline of the blouse. So on the side, I will go up by one inch and I'll go ahead and shape that side. But pay attention that the higher you go by the side, the shorter the blouse would be. So I will simply just connect it using a slight curve to the dart legs and here we have it so um when we move to the back i will repeat the same thing there so this is it for the front alteration now let's move over to the back now the back will have a straight dart remember that the front um we have ample princess that there so on the back i'll go ahead and measure the shoulder slope and i will mark the midpoint so you remember on the back i also have my three inches neck width and one inch neck depth. So to get the midpoint of the shoulder, I'll place my tape on the neck width, touching the shoulder tip, and I'll fold it into two. Now I will go ahead and make a mark at that point, and I'll connect a straight line to the midpoint. Yeah. So this is it. Now let's move over to the neckline alteration for the back. And I want the neckline there to be 5.5 inches. So I have my tape placed on the starting point and I'll go ahead and make a mark at 5.5 inches. So with my ruler, I will use a broken line to just connect this 5.5 inches mark that we have there. Yeah. So this is the neckline depth for the back. Now we're going to tighten this line. So I will go ahead and mark 0.25 on each side just so that we can tighten that part. So in total, I'm using half inch to tighten um, the chest line and I'll proceed to connect it to our neckline depth. So this is what we have there. Now I will go ahead and mark the shoulder width. So just like we did on the front, um, our Shoulder width on the front is 3.5 inches. So from the shoulder tip, I will go inwards and make a mark at 3.5 inches. Remember, I started my measurement from the tip of the shoulder inwards. So I have my 3.5 inches mark there. Now you remember at this part, we have three inches as the width on the front. And I'll go ahead and repeat the same thing on the back as well. I'll also use a slight curve to connect these two points. And here we have it. Now, as usual, I will not leave the neckline this way. So I will go ahead and tighten it by 0.25. Now I will connect it to the shoulder tip using a straight line. So what this simply means is that I'll be cutting off this tiny piece, this tiny area on top, and this will help your shoulder to sit perfectly well without dropping off. So this is it. Now let's move over to the lower part of the back. And like we did on the front, I will simply extend the dart legs to touch the hemline 
of the blouse and here we have it now let's move over to the shaping of the hemline just like we did on the front i came up by the side by one inch now i'll do the same thing on the back as well and i will use a slight curve to also connect it to one of the dart legs and this is it so the back is ready now let's move over to the main alteration of the style but before then i will go ahead and separate the front and the back block yeah and here we have it i've separated the two blocks now i will begin my alteration from the back so i'll keep the front aside now let's start now i'll go ahead and measure 3.5 inches on the waistline away from this dart leg and i'll make a mark there all right now moving over to the chest line i will also measure 4.5 inches inwards from this dart leg so on the chest line i marked 4.5 on the waist line i measure 3.5 inches and i'll come in with a straight line and i'll go ahead and connect it this way so this is the only alteration that we are making on the back now we're not going to leave it this way we're also going to tighten it on the waistline so i will use 0.25 on each side to tighten the waistline on the back so in total i've made use of half an inch to tighten the back waistline which we are going to add back now i will simply go ahead and connect it so we are simply um forming another dart to tighten um the waistline on the back and this half an inch that we took we will need to add it back remember in pattern drafting you need all your measurements to be complete so i just marked that half inch back and i will go ahead and connect it to the chest line and i will extend it to the hemline of the blouse yeah so this is the only alteration we are making on the back now i'll proceed to label the back so i'll call here b1 and i'll call here b2 and b3 now this labeling will help you when you cut this out and it's time to transfer it to the fabric remember that here is the center back and here is the side back so i'm done with the back but before i cut out there's one final thing that we need to do now this half inch that i used to tighten the chest line i would like to add it back i always like to add it back so i will go ahead and first extend this line outward by half inch and i'll come in with my french curve also and i will simply connect it back to the chest line now I will go ahead and just draw a straight line to meet the half inch mark that I have there. Afterwards, I'll proceed to use a slight curve to reconnect it back to the chest line. Now with this, you're sure that your back is not going to short in any way. And it's also optional if you don't want. Now let's go ahead and label the yoke. So I'll label here the back yoke now i'll also use arrows to indicate the part that is facing the armhole now the area around the chest line i'll just label it as ch and then the shoulder slope i'll write it as h so we are done done with the back so we have one final thing left before i cut out now i'll go ahead and label the pattern according to um the fabric that i'll be transferring them to now for b1 i'll be transferring it to the fashion fabric so i will write it as ff so ff simply means the fashion fabric and the b2 also i will be transferring it to the fashion fabric as well now for the back is only the b3 that i'll be transferring to a plain fabric so we will be doing um this labeling much later for now i'll proceed to cut this out yeah <laughs> So I'm done cutting out the back. Now I have a tiny dart there that we still cut out. Now I'll keep this aside and we'll move over to the front. So here is the front. Now the first thing we're going to do is to go ahead and alter the front to our style. Now I'll be cutting this part off. So this is the front yoke and I'll proceed to just draw a straight line there because I'll be cutting it off. Now. We'll go ahead and label um, the yoke as well. So this is the front yoke. I will also use arrows to indicate the part that is facing the armhole. 
and the shoulder area i'll write it as sh and i'll also write ch to indicate the part that is facing the chest line these labelings are important so that you don't go mixing them up when you're transferring to your fabric now let's begin with the actual alteration on the front so we're starting from the center front but before then i'll label it so this is the center front and here is the side front so let's start from the center front now on the underpost line i'll go ahead and measure what i have there and i'll mark the center so i have my tape placed there and i'll simply fold it into two and i'll make a mark at that midpoint now i will also repeat the same thing on the waistline as well so i'll go ahead come in with my tape place it on the waistline and i'll fold it into two so i have it folded into two and i'll make a mark there now the width is actually 3.5 so half of it is 1.75 now i will come in with my french curve and we're going to use a slight curve to connect these two points now pay attention to where my curve is starting okay so and also pay attention to the shape of the curve like i mentioned earlier we're using a slight curve so i'm connecting from um from the width of our yoke this way to the hemline of the blouse i hope that makes sense but just pay attention to the way i place the curve and you need this line to be slightly curved so that you can easily join it back so this is it for the center front we have altered it to the style line now this area where um it's starting i will go ahead and notch it when it's time to transfer it to the fabric so that i will know exactly where i'm going to start fixing the yoke now let's move over to the side so i'll go ahead and measure the under bust line and i will divide it into two so i have my tape placed there and what i have there is 5.5 inches so i simply fold my tape into two and i'll make a mark at that mid point now remember that we're yet to close the bust that and the moment we do that um this side front is going to have um a little bit of changes so i'll also go ahead and measure the waistline also and I will make a mark at the center point now i will try and connect it but if i do um the shape will not be good because we're yet to close the bust that now remember that we also need to extend um the marking to pass through the bust point line okay now i will go ahead and try to connect it but i just tried that and the shape is looking funny so we're going to leave this side front for now until we cut out and close the boss that. So this is it for the side front. I just highlighted the marks that we made pending when we close the boss that. So I will go ahead now and number this pattern just like we did on the back. So this is my F1 and here is the F2 and this part is the F3 and F4. Remember we are still going to divide the side front into two so i have them numbered f1 to f4 another thing that can help you to assemble these patterns easily is to put your balance mark but i will not be doing that because the numbering will help so i'll go ahead and just cut and i'll stop at this point then i'll proceed to cut from the hemline to the boss point line so that we can close the boss that and finish up our alteration on the side so here we have it. I just stopped my cutting on the bust point line and I'll go ahead and close the bust that. Remember to close your bust that or any kind of that is the same process. You raise your pattern paper along the marked line this way and you're going to rest it on the second that line. It's the same method. So I'll go ahead and close down um, this that permanently using my paper tape. And this is it. So I have closed the bust that permanently i'll proceed to reshape the bust point area because it's looking a bit um pointy and i don't want that so i'll go ahead and just reshape it a bit because i want an even curve around the bust point area so i'll be cutting off this part that i'm shading now this is it i'll proceed to blend the side front using a straight line so i'm simply connecting um a straight line from the waist to the chest line and this is it so let's finish up with um our alteration for the side now using my french curve i will use a slight curve to connect those two points that we made earlier so i'll go ahead and extend it to touch um the bust point line and the chest line this way 
and I will extend it to touch the hemline as well. So this is it. I have altered um, the side fronts, but just like we did on the back, I will not leave it this way as well. We're also going to form a little dart there just to give it a better shape. So I will go ahead and mark 0 0.25 on each side of the waist. Pay attention that I have my tape on the waist line. So I'll be extending it to touch the bust point line. I'm not extending the line towards the chest. I'm only stopping on the bust point line. So I'm simply forming a dart um, on the waistline and I'm extending it to touch the hemline of the blouse as well. So this is it. I have formed the dart and just like we did on the back, the half inch that I just made use of um, here, I will go ahead and mark it on the side. And this is it. Remember, all your measurements must be complete. Now, I'll come in with a straight line and I'll simply reconnect um, this half inch that we just marked to touch the chest line and I'll also extend it to the hemline. So this is it. The pattern is ready. Now, we have also labeled it as well. Now, I'll proceed to cut this out. Yeah. So here is the front. I'm done cutting it out. So I'll try to arrange it. So here is F1, F2, F3, and F4. And here is the yoke as well for the front. Now let me bring the back so that we can also um, arrange it. So here's the back as well. Remember for the back, we have B1, B2, and B3, then the yoke. So we are actually done with the pattern drafting. Not done, done, but let's say 90% done. So um, I'll go ahead and label it according to the fabric that I'll be transferring it to. Remember, I had mentioned it earlier. Now I'll be transferring some to the fashion fabric, so I'll label it as FF. So let's begin the labeling. Now the F1, I will transfer it to the fashion fabric, so I'll write FF on F1 pattern. Moving over to F2 and F3, I'll be transferring them to a plain fabric. So I'll simply just write P there, signifying a plain fabric. Now for F4, I'll be transferring it to the fashion fabric. So I'll write FF there. So here we have it. Now let's move over to the back. The B1, I'll be transferring it to the fashion fabric. So I'll write FF there. The same thing applies to the B2, I'll be transferring it to a fashion fabric as well. And the B3, I'll be transferring it to a plain fabric. So I'll write p there so here we have it now um so i have it properly labeled now the ff signifies the fashion fabric and the p signifies a plain fabric now we're not leaving it this way as well so um for the f1 which is the center front i'll go ahead and attach another pattern paper by the side because we will need to extend it um from the waistline outward so I'll be cutting the center front on fold. Now I've gone ahead to attach the, um, the plain pattern paper. So from the hemline, I will come outward by 1.5 inches and I'll draw a straight line from the waist to touch that 1.5 inches that I just marked. And here we have it. So I'll proceed to cut off the excess paper around this. So here we have it. I have cut it out. Now this is our new center front which is the F1 pattern. Now I'll go ahead and come in with the F2. So when it's time to join, this is the way it's going to be. So we have F1, F2, F3, and F4. So the front is almost ready, but we still have one final thing to cut. Look at it much later. For now, let's look at the joining process. So I'll be transferring um, the ones that I wrote FF, which is the fashion fabric. I'll transfer them to the fashion fabric and I will transfer the ones I wrote P to the plain fabric and i'll be adding half inch all round and i'll also add two inches as my hemming allowance then i'll also add two inches as my side seam allowance now the two inches is not a constant you can add 1.5 to yours 
So for the yoke, I like to always um, join my yoke together so that they become a single piece. So I'll go ahead and join them on the shoulder, that part where we label that as SH. I'll join them together and I'll transfer it to the fashion fabric. Now this is also optional. You can cut yours separately. So I'll go ahead and do all this and that will be it. Now let's look at the final thing I told us, which will be the side flare that we're going to be attaching to the front and the back. So we're going to be adding that flare um, in between F3 and F2, okay? So this is it. I have gone ahead to cut it out. And I have a detailed video on my channel where I did something like this. So I'll leave the link in the description box. But let me go ahead and just give us a quick explanation of what i did now kindly pay attention so um her actual under bust to waist length is three inches but because of this particular style i made it four inches because i want a, a um a very good fitting around the waist area okay so remember what i said her normal under bust to waist length is three inches but because of this style i intentionally made it four inches because i want it to have fitting before the flare starts now i'll go ahead and measure from the waist to the hemline and what i have here is 6.5 inches remember i told us that i'll be adding two inches hemming allowance to this so that will give us a total of 8.5 inches and i'll also add half inch for the joining giving us a total of nine inches so i've gone ahead to cut out this piece of fabric that looks like a triangle and the length is 9 inches, which includes all that I have broken down. Now, the width is 7 inches. So, by the time I'm done joining it, we'll be left with a width of 6 inches. Now, let me show us how to join it. So, we'll be joining it um, in between F2 and F3. So, we're going to be joining it from the waistline down to the hem. So, after I'm done transferring this to the fabric, I will go ahead and place it from the waist to the hem. Now I'll be transferring to the fashion fabric. So I have labeled it as FF. So I'll be placing it in between F2 and F3 and this will be it for the front. So this is it for the front. So moving over to the back, we're also going to be adding the, um, the flare that we cut out to the back as well. Now I'll be adding it in between b2 and b3 and i'll also add it in between b1 and b2 as well so i want the back to be fuller so i'll be adding it in two um places on the back and remember on the front we have it just on one side so this is it i'll go ahead and transfer all this to the fabric and i'll show us the finished look and here we have it I've gone ahead to transfer it to the fabric and I joined it. The sewing process is actually super easy. So this is the finished look. Thank you guys for watching. Kindly subscribe to the channel and turn on your notification bell if you have not. So you get notified each time I upload a new video. And kindly give this video a like and you can share it with your friends and to any sewing group where you belong because I'm definite that it will I, um, help someone. So... Till we meet again in my next video. Bye.